Hi guys. I'm going to see if I can do something useful with these vape batteries that I keep picking up in the road. What I think I'll do is put two or maybe all three of these in parallel to make a 3.7 volt three cell battery. So to say all in parallel and then run this little uh, this little boat off them. Anyway, it runs off two AA batteries, so three volts normally. This will give it 4.2 volts freshly charged. So it'll be overpowering it a bit, but it will probably survive. But I don't know how long it'd run just off a single one, is it? So if I put all three in parallel, join them up together, and then run it off that, we'll see how it goes. I'll just check the voltage in these anyway. I haven't charged them. I'm, what I'm going to do, there'll be plenty of people who will tell me this is the wrong thing to do. I can use one of these charger boards, but connect all three of them to it in parallel. So it charges all three at once. At the moment, the number three resistor, R3 there, sets the maximum current output at one amp. These are only 550 milliamp hours, so that would be far too much to charge one of them on its own. It would probably work, but it might shorten their life. Bearing in mind these are probably half dead anyway. Um, but if I put all three in parallel, then it will be charging all three of them off that one amp. So they should, should be okay. Some of these have even got um, protection circuits in the end of them. I don't know if these ones do. I'm not seeing one there. No, I don't, no, these are just direct. One I opened the other day had got a protection circuit on the end of it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to snap off one of these. Wire it up B plus B minus for the battery and then the connector goes on the outside two tags. Plus and minus. Charge them up and see if it all goes horribly wrong. One advantage of them being completely free. It's not the end of the world if it all goes horribly wrong. I'll just have a look. Uh, can I position this way? You can actually see it. How about just there? Okay, so this one should be positive at this end and negative in there somewhere 3.3 volts that's not bad uh, that one there somewhere that one there oh that one's dead Very dead. Let's check there's nothing getting in the way there. I'm trying to check it. We might just be putting two in parallel then. Because if one's completely dead, it'll upset the other two. Yeah, that doesn't look very good at all. So that one's probably not worth saving. Three point one. So, yeah, those two look okay. That one looks like it's had it. So I might rig that up to a separate board and try charging it on its own. So that's paralleled these two together, just soldering them straight across, which we could. 
could put a meter on again. We should still have three point something volts. Three point two, yeah. So now we'll solder this one onto here. generous yeah. so that's battery in and then not that one the other one that one battery out Right, so that's that bit. So if I plug this in, we should start charging. Red light for charging. I'll put a bit of Captan tape, that's this goldy coloured stuff, over the terminals just to make sure nothing happens. I'll do that in a minute. And the other thing I'll do is I'll put this connector across the battery terminals on here so we can just plug it in and test it with those batteries out the way. I could take that right out and solder onto the um, tags on the back but I'd have to break the hot glue seals so I'll just see if I can possibly get solder onto those spring clips. They might be steel in which case we can't but I'll give it a try. I've scraped the surface and managed to get a bit of solder to take on there. So can we do this so you can see what I'm doing? So there we are, directly connected. And I would think even though these haven't been charging for very long, they were already on three point something volts. So that should be enough to drive this anyway. So they're good enough to drive it, but we will fully charge it. And then the idea is those will just sit on there like that. It'd be best if I had a bit of um, shrink, uh, heat shrink tubing to go over there. I do have some 
somewhere, but I have no idea where it is. So we'll just have to uh, put a plastic bag over it or something for now. Well, it'll be all right as long as I don't actually drop it in the water. While that's charging up, I will just wire this one up to another one of these so we can charge it. And see if it's any good. The fact it's dropped right down to half a volt means it's probably had it. But we should be all right to at least test it. In fact, we've probably got just enough length on there. Don't cut them both together, otherwise you're shorting the battery out. So one after the other. And yeah, we'll have just enough length there to solder on there so we can at least charge it. Or try and charge it. Run the risk of overcharging it. As I say, one amp out of there. This only wants half an amp. But we'll give it a try anyway. Worst case scenario, it makes a good YouTube video when it goes up in smoke. Just gonna have to sit up a second. Put a bit of solder on the wires. And just tag them straight on top for now. Right, so I'll get a charger lead for that. Oh, in fact, let's just plug it in and see what happens. So if we get smoke straight away, we know that it's uh, a problem. Well, I've just charged it for a few seconds. Oh, you can't see the meter. Right, meter. Yeah, you can see that. That's come right up. So that battery might be all right. Giving it a few seconds of charge. Seems to have boosted it quite nicely. Right, I've been charging this one on the desk next to me so I could keep an eye on it. It's just turned blue, so that one's done. And out here we can see another one that's blue. Just turn the light on and find the light switch. There we are. Sorry about that. So that one's charged now. Or oh, that pair. That's good. Right, just a quick test. Power on. Have we got enough water in there? Just enough water. Power on. Forwards. Okay. So, it works. If we get a chance to go and try that outdoors somewhere, we will.
As for how long it'll last, well, we'll find out. But at the moment, we're running my little boat off two vape batteries. It's uh, 11 o'clock at night, so it's dark outside. We can't go and test it in the water but, or anything. Obviously, we didn't need to have the circuit board permanently attached. That's because I might want to use it for something else, not specifically for this boat. Otherwise, I'd have just put an ordinary connector directly on the battery, and then we could have plugged the battery straight into the power lead for the boat. There is an advantage leaving the circuit board in circuit because it does have a protection circuit in there to protect the battery from over discharge. Thanks for watching. If you want more information, check down below in the video description. If you like this video, you might like this one up here. And if you want to subscribe, you can check out my channel over here. Up here is my latest video on my channel. And down here is a video playlist associated with the video you've just watched. Thanks again for watching.